Hey everybody, Peptide Buddy here. Today we're going to do a short and sweet video featuring a short and sweet 29 amino acid peptide called Samorolin. This is video number three on Samorolin, and in my opinion, it's one of the most fascinating perspective pieces of research I've come across in all my studying I've done on the world of peptides. So Andrew Huberman talked about Sermoralin use on multiple platforms. I'm sure you can find plenty of videos about it. Um, I've done, like I said, two previously, yet I haven't heard anyone mention this. Possibly Sermoralin's best kept secret. Does Sermoralin increase testosterone? So as always, we do a little bit of a recap. Sermoralin is a growth hormone releasing hormone analog that works on the growth hormone and IGF pathway and is used clinically in growth hormone deficiency. So on this page you'll find a clipping from an interesting lit review that was the inspiration for this video. Let's read it together starting in the highlighted area. Or just above, it was noted that both peptides increase GH by a similar magnitude. However, somorolin also produced small acute rises in prolactin, FSH, and LH. These findings revealed that somorolin promotes changes in growth hormone levels similar to those observed with endogenous growth hormone releasing hormone. Okay, we know this. Simultaneously, Somorolin uniquely stimulated both FSH and LH release, implying a potential role in the treatment of hypogonadism via the stimulation of endogenous testosterone production. Consistent with this observation, in a later study examining GH-deficient rats, somorolin therapy was shown to result in an increase in testosterone secretion. Okay, so... Growth hormone, you, you know, it's the basis of a lot of supplemental experimental peptides, sermorolin, ipamorolin, tessamorolin, all the morolins and others. And these work on a hormone access independent of testosterone. So it is unique and pretty damn cool for a peptide acting on this pathway to also influence gonadal hormone production. Okay, so sermorolin not only works on this pathway to the left that we've discussed ad nauseum on this channel, the one that takes GHRH to growth hormone to IGF-1 and then its downstream actions on bones and tissues and muscle, but it also works on this pathway to the right, the one involved in the production of sex hormones. The hypothalamus releases GnRH. RH, which causes the anterior pituitary to release LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, which in turn prompts gonadal release of testosterone and estradiol. LH and FSH increase and modulate the release of sex hormones and are involved in plenty of different physiologic functions like menstruation in women and formation of functional healthy sperm in men. So for instance, in men, LH stimulates the production of testosterone, while FSH primarily functions in formation of healthy functional sperm um, and spermatogenesis. And so essentially what this research is poking at is this idea that sermorolin can be interwoven with this access on the right in addition to that on the left, so that it not only has growth hormone-like effects, but it also may increase testosterone production. And so in people who are hypogonadal or have you know poor function of this axis on the right in such a way that they might at baseline have low levels of LH and FSH and therefore have decreased testosterone synthesis, Sermorolin might have an impact in increasing the amount of testosterone. So one of the caveats, as I like to include, is that one study showed that combination treatment with sermorolin, GHRP2, and GHRP6 resulted in an environment favorable of testosterone production, so increased testosterone and decreased LH and FSH. Um, that's kind of appropriate negative feedback. When you increase testosterone, you decrease the hormones that precede it um, because the body doesn't need to produce as much when you've had, you know, a surplus of the end product. 
so while there are a couple studies that kind of exhibit these similar results, this is something I wanted to point out. So does somorolin alone increase testosterone? I'd say, you know, it's got promise. Is it there yet? Not completely, but like with all of these peptides, more research is needed. However, this is definitely a plus one for somorolin. I haven't seen anything like this in the other peptides that I've researched. And I know you'll see like wellness clinics saying BPC-157 increases testosterone. And, you know, I think that's a load of BS. But for Samoralin, there would be some truth in it. So I loved making this video. I like making all these videos discussing peptides with this awesome community. Um, and so please like and subscribe. It's the only way to support the channel. And uh, I will speak with you all soon. Have a great day.